All right, howdy back folks. Welcome to another video here from Top Comics Pressing. In this video, what we're gonna do is start a case study here on this relatively heavily um, loved copy of Avengers Annual Number 10. I picked this one I'm off at Instagram from Dark Raven Comics. Uh, Jeremy there hooked me up with a nice collection of books. So this one uh, obviously has some issues to it, but very first, if you're unfamiliar with this issue, it is a very popular uh, issue for two reasons. First of which is it's the credited first appearance of the X-Men character Rogue, who is very popular, particularly due to her flirtatious relationship with the other popular X-Men Gambit. Uh, throughout the 1990s and uh, the other reason this one is popular is because it's the first cover appearance of the villainous um, uh, mystique as shown here in the box with the brotherhood of evil mutants so this one gets a uh, it's kind of a twofer from the key x-men key perspective um, and it is uh, kind of hard to find in really really high grade this one's never going to make a high grade book, particularly due to a monster crease that you can see right through here. So if you're unfamiliar, just this crease on itself being a very long, probably six or seven inch crease across that corner, that by itself would probably limit the grade of a comic book, even if that was the only defect, probably to a six five. And we can see this book has a lot of defects beyond that. So it has a pretty wicked spine roll. And this is a true spine roll. So, you know, we can see the teardrop here from the top down. We can flip it on over and see all kinds of exposed wraps on the back, and we can see those staples on the front cover popping right up at you. And so this is not a miswrap. This thing has all three of the hallmarks of a true spine roll. So we're going to need to iron this book flat and then refold it back on over. Uh, in addition to that, if you flip this book on over, it has some pretty heavy foxing. So you can see all of this brown reddish crud up here. Uh, that's a specific kind of staining called foxing and, and we're going to treat this and lighten it all the way on up uh, and just see what we can do with it. You'll notice that there is some more creasing um, down through here and a little bit of tearing and some more creasing as well as uh, this is actually not going to be foxing. Um, this is going to be a darker patch of what would be true staining uh, and most likely is eating the gloss there. And if you look really carefully, you can see all these little uh, what look like fingernail scratches there. So that's not going to come on out. So there's a whole bunch of stuff wrong with this book. But because it's popular and because I didn't have one and because the price was right, uh, I was willing to get it and let's see what we can do with it. You can also see that there is an extraordinary amount of foxing on the interior as well as those dark spots there. And you can see that that does translate to the inner page. So if you line up um, that dark spot there, you can see where it kind of rolls together. So there's a lot going on with this book and it's going to need more than a little bit of TLC. Uh, you can see it here. There's like a, a tremendous amount of interior foxing that matches kind of what's on that cover. So we're going to pretty this one on up. I don't think it's ever going to make a high grade, but just for kicks, let's do it. Uh, first thing we're going to do is give it a good solid dry clean. Then what we're going to do is fix that um, spine roll with the iron. And then we're going to go ahead and do uh, an exhaustive treatment with our blue light LED overlay treatment. We're going to use the full strength 3% hydrogen peroxide on that. And I have a feeling this thing is going to be in that uh, 15 to 20 treatments category, particularly with how intense the foxing is on the interior cover. Um, then we're going to come back and we might have to readjust this or re-iron it depending on how much it shifts as a function of that blue LED treatment. And then uh, what we'll do is give it at least one final press, if not two, just to make sure that that spine is thoroughly reset. Uh, and so let's go ahead and get started here in a second after I take some pictures with a good dry clean. All right, coming on back after some pictures, it's time for a good old dry clean with my eraser and my Swiffer sheet. And I'm just going to start here in all these white zones. And the front cover here actually looked pretty good. And make sure we get by Mystique. And you'll notice I'm not being too careful around all this broken glass. I'm just giving it a good sideways, very light kind of rub. Again, not a lot of pressure, just a lot of horizontal movement. And we're getting 
we're getting what we want out of there without damaging the, the gloss. So nothing too crazy there. Uh, you can see it's got a lot of black, but you'll notice it's black. It's not blue, it's not purple, it's not red, it's black. And again, I wipe, wipe that off with some painter's tape that's off camera just to get the fouling off the, the eraser. So that way I know I'm starting with a nice clean new surface. I don't think that there's a ton in the Avengers, so I'm going pretty quick here. I think most of the dry cleaning needs are going to be on the back. A little bit of some schmutz there on the E. Nothing too crazy. The front actually looked like it was pretty good. A little bit of creasing, some color breaking, finger bends there. So when CGC puts some of those on there, sometimes they call them finger bends or light bends, but what they really mean is it's broken gloss. Uh, I, I really wish that they would clarify that because it makes somebody look like a terrible presser when the comic book comes back with quote light bends but what they really mean is it's broken gloss the paper's flat but you can still see it in the glare this book just has a lot of foxing it's very gross Really nasty spine roll, too. Again, using my left hand fingers splayed to kind of anchor the paper so that I don't cause a tear or any other problems. And this foxing is intense enough where there's no way we're going to be able to get it all. But what we're going to try to do is make it, you know, 85-90% better. Clear the light stuff, make the heavy stuff a little bit less noticeable or gross. I think as this book sits right now, it might grade three and a half, four. It's pretty low grade, especially with the spine roll. I think it was sold to me as a VG copy, which would be a four. No major chunks missing, only the one really bad crease on the front, but lots to do here. Plenty of surface crud here to clean up. I think it's really important to make sure you start with a deep dry clean. Get everything off that you can before you go to the blue LED. Lots of crud up here. Oops, lost my eraser. I always hate it when I lose a piece this big. It makes me feel like I'm wasting a eraser. Oh well.
the uh, the covers clearly over those pages, so I want to support that while I'm dry cleaning. So I'm just going to put this backer board under there to make sure I'm not creasing the not creasing the cover. Some light chipping out here on the top edge. That'll about do it. Some of this I think has gone beyond foxing and might be true tanning as well. It's kind of a very stress speckled look in a couple of spots. So we'll see what we can do with it. All right, that's our dry clean. Time to get this thing in the light box. I'm imagining four on both exterior surfaces and uh, three on each interior surface would get me to, let's see here, is that 14 total treatments? So that's gonna be my gut here for the start. Each one of those, again, are gonna be an overlay full of 3% hydrogen peroxide and then two hours in the light box. So that's gonna be a total of 28 hours in the light box. Gonna take a while, uh, but I think that's the best course on this one. So go, go Avengers. All right, time to get flattening out this copy of Avengers Annual number 10. Uh, again, this one has a pretty wicked spine roll. It has all three indicators, teardrop on top, uh, clearly exposed open wraps on the back on an angle, and the staples on the front are pointing straight up at us. And so let's go ahead and get started. I'm just going to open this one on up to the centerfold. Just, ugh, it's even got some crud in there on the centerfolds. So that's a little disgusting. All right, we're just going to flatten this on out from the centerfold on out. And uh, to do that, I have my kitchen parchment paper here. This is a sheet of SRP under it, just to make sure I'm not scratching it. And we're going to take that kitchen parchment and a uh, wet cotton round. And again, this thing's not dripping wet. It's not flicking, but it's pretty, pretty damp. And we're going to use the cotton round to deliver a good amount of moisture and humidity to the parchment paper. And then we're going to use our hanger nine tacking iron to... Um, loosen up those fibers and again i like starting from the interior here because i think the inner wraps respond better than the cover and i think it avoids some stress on the staples now um you can see here my hanger nine is set to right about two i'm just going to start in the middle apply some genuine but quite mild pressure again you want to let the heat and the steam do most of the work here we're not trying to you know win any superhero contests by crushing the the paper down it's really a function of heat and steam going into the paper and we're going to have to do this several times here to get that paper to kind of forget uh, typically i forget or try to avoid going over the staples but in this case i'm just going to be careful not to you know rub them in any way and just gently apply some heat right over them uh, partially because that spine roll is quite severe so i'm going to need and want all the help i can get Um, you'll notice that there is some folding of the paper here. You can push those imprints into the paper, and if it were a cover, that would be a really big problem. Uh, in this case, since it is on the 
inner ramps, it's not as big of a deal. You'll also notice I'm being much more liberal about the amount of water I'm applying. You definitely don't want to get anywhere near that wet if you're on a cover. But the inner wraps, again, are quite forgiving, and so you can use both more moisture, more heat, and you don't have to worry about those little micro folds leaving permanent lines. I think we're about getting there. So this is our third pass with fresh water. Uh, I'm thinking we'll do four total. It's already pretty flat. You can see kind of where some of the stress from the staple was. Um, so we'll do one more just for good measure. Three probably would do it, but we'll do a fourth one just because. And again, you might be worried about a little bit of that folding or that distortion of the paper on the interior. Uh, I don't think that there's any grade scale that accounts for that. So, you know, ideally it'll be perfect and flat, but especially around the staple, if there's a little bit of a distortion or a little bit of a wave, it's not the kind of thing I worry about. Maybe I should. Maybe somebody can leave a comment that I should really be worried about it. But I mean, it's basically going to be right where the book is folded. You'll see just a little faint line right around that staple. So let's go ahead and uh, make sure that everything's lined up there on the cover. And because it's an annual, it is a slightly fatter issue, but I think if I set this up on its edge, life's pretty good there. So what I'm gonna try to do is stick this backer board then uh, in uh, where the staples are and give it a good solid fold. And I'm gonna try to error on the side of having those staples rolled a little bit too far back. So I want that backer board you know, really to give them a good put, squeeze. And we're just going to check that out on the top. So that's about where, where I think it'll naturally fall. Uh, on that alignment, those staples, I would say, are still going to be visible on the front. But it should hopefully be more like a 45 kind of pointing out on the edge than how they were before. And if we check it out over here, you know, I think that lines up pretty good on the bottom as well. So we'll, we'll take that, kind of roll it under as much as possible. There's a little bit of a staple tear in there. I think that was probably likely there before because I don't see it on the bottom. It's really hard to see under. So that looks pretty good to me. And again, I'm gonna try to keep my hand there. What I'm gonna try to do first is put uh, some pressure down right in the middle to give it a little bit of a crease right between those staples uh, as much as possible. Make 
sure that that's still lined up kind of how I want it to. <clears throat> Looks pretty good there. Looks pretty good there. So I think that that'll be about right. Um, given the staples on this one, I would say are downshifted. The gap up top is much larger than the gap on the bottom. I'm going to try to go from the back cover and go on down. Start at the top, and I'm actually going to grab a new sheet of this. So here's my non-stick parchment. Strip off. Here we go. Here we go. Before I get too carried away, let me just make sure it's not shifted anymore. Looking pretty good. I'm actually going to take the backer board out now. Without that backer board, we have to be very careful about where the staples are if we're going over them. But you can see now we've kind of fixed that teardrop. We've got the edge over here lined up. Put it down flat on its back. We still have a little bit of open, open pages, but not much. So I'm just going to try to roll those very slightly with my fingers there. And we're going to give this another go right down the back. Kind of with that lined up without the backer board in there so that I can get a little bit tighter of a fold. Remember, the backer board is there to help protect the staples uh, and the space over the staples. And we just want to go between the staples as much as possible. So we'll go from the staple to the top, the staple to the bottom, and then hopefully between the staples here. from the front. Hopefully that gives us a good solid fold there. And again, the staples aren't fully on the back, but they're not fully pointed up at us e either. And if we let that thing hang out, that looks to be about a normal seam for this book. Nothing too crazy there. Importantly, the pages did have a little bit of a splay to them, and now they're also quite parallel. So uh, all in all, I dig this. I think this is looking pretty good. And we'll now go ahead and take it into the light box. So uh, that's looking pretty good to me. 
All right, here's an intermediate look at this copy of Avengers Annual number 10. So you can see here it does have that kind of standard wrinkly look that we're used to out of getting our blue LED overlay. But if we look at it, the book now is significantly brighter than it was before. I don't see any clear evidence of fading. Um, the interiors now look mostly clear of the foxing. So on the very top edge there, there might be a little bit of residual. Um, but for the most part, that really intense staining is gone and it looks quite nice. The back cover looks completely transformed. Even those really, really dark spots up here, um, you know, look pretty good, I think. So I think the overall that's that's quite all right. Um, and if you kind of scroll around the edge here, you know, we can still see kind of where those scratches were along the bottom. So this is definitely our issue. That spine roll does look like it's, you know, trying to revert, but I think a good amount of that is actually just the cover. So when we press this, we're gonna make sure we put that magazine backer board pretty squarely in the center of it. Uh, and you know the interior here also looks quite nice so you might have a little bit of yellowing but for the most part looks quite quite good so this thing's going to now go in for its press hopefully it'll be a one presser it might be a two presser we'll see um, but all in all it should look pretty good uh, again i'm not expecting this to come out perfectly lined up but if we can get it you know most of the way there i'll be pretty happy with that so we'll see how that goes all right keep your fingers crossed all right, howdy everybody. Here is one final look at this copy of Avengers number 10. So this book had a lot of foxing, some light staining, a really vicious spine roll, and it was pretty curled out. So we took care of that teardrop shape, um, and we have fixed for the most part the, the spine roll. So I wanted to show this one to you out of the bag so that you could see it. Um, you know, the cover is a little loose from those light staple tears, and we didn't hit its spot on the nose, but that gap there is pretty normal and not that uncommon for this issue, particularly because it's a double fat and it only has normal size staples, so, so that's all right. Um, if we really wanted to, we could probably re- um, pull this, you can see that there's a little bit of gap between those inner wraps and the cover there. Part of that is due to the small staple stairs that were there that, you know, were probably part of causing the initial spine roll. But part of it is because it must not have gotten fully pulled over on the uh, press the way that we might like, and so that would probably help out. So if I were going to send this to CGC, I would probably uh, give it one more press here to kind of pull that cover as you can see there, moving towards my finger and thumb as tight as possible. And that would get us uh, a lot closer there on that top edge. So the inner wraps are actually where we want them and we just have a slightly misaligned cover that you can see right, right there. So uh, this one though is just gonna go to top loader and it's just gonna be for me. So we're just gonna hang out with it just like this for the time being. It presents a lot better. We got rid of, you know, an inordinate amount of that staining on the back. So this, you know, still has a little bit of discoloration up top here. Um, that's probably aged paper. So I don't think we're ever going to be able to do anything about that. And you can kind of see that too, because there was all this chipping and that was present in the before pictures as well. So that indicates to me that it's just a level of damaged paper. Uh, and I think you get that from this kind of weird, just grayish sheen that's left there. You know, it just kind of looks dull and gray. Uh, the rest of it looks, you know, much much improved a lot of that light foxing is taken care of or that really heavy foxing is dramatically improved and so um, this one I think is going to be good for me it was never going to be a high grade issue with this crease going through here and so I think we did as about as much as we are going to to this one so thanks for staying tuned and uh, have a good one